Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another great episode of Bahrain Now, your source of local initiatives, happenings, talents, and trends. I'm your host, Bara Abdullah, here to walk you through our exciting lineup of segments and personalities from around Bahrain. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, to a very interesting and exciting topic as we have Bahraini engineering students have enjoyed once in a lifetime opportunity, you know, helping to keep Bahrain Raid Extreme on course for victory in the New World Raid and Rally Championship, the WRRC. The group selected from the University of Bahrain, the American University of Bahrain and Bahrain Polytechnic University have just completed a month-long internship with the world-leading motorsport and advanced technology business, ProDrive, and all taking place in England. And to speak more about this, we have with us here four of these students, which are Jasim al-Dawadi, Farid Abu Sagir, Hassan al-Asfur, and Faris al-Qatami. Well, good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Well, thank you. Well, Thank you for having us. Great. Oh, definitely. You. you know, representing with the T-shirts and all of the Pro Drive and VRX and all yeah, of that, exactly. I can tell you guys had a lot of fun, right? Yeah. Uh, so, gentlemen, pretty much having you here is a great honor and very excited to hear your stories. But before we delve into the matter and see what really happened in that one month long, you know, pretty much an internship program, mm -hmm. I want to know more about you and who are you? So, starting with you, Jossam. Yeah, uh, my name is Jossam al Dawadi, uh, fresh graduate from Bahrain Polytechnic University. Okay. I graduate as a mechanical engineer. Why? Uh, because I was uh, very interested in uh, mechanical engineer. Mm. So, that's why. Uh, I like uh, engineering uh, in, in general, general. but uh, more specific, I like the mechanical engineer. Oh, wow. So uh, I started my uh, university at 2017 and mm. I graduate uh, in 2022. Mm. So actually for this internship, uh, we did uh, a competition to get uh, for this internship. Wow. So wow. we did uh, work uh, for four months, mm. continuous uh, daily. So we work very hard to get uh, for this internship, which is a uh, very interesting and uh, important uh, opportunity. And I'm sure it was pretty intense as well. Yeah. A lot was going on. We'll get back to the internship program in a bit. But, mm -hmm. you know, welcome on board, Jasser. Thank you. Know, you. Appreciate Thank that. You now, Farid, Hi. tell us more about yourself. Well, I'm a fresh graduate mechanical engineer okay. from Bahrain Polytechnic. Mm. I did my senior project as a uh, with Jasim al Dawadi mm. as well. We both uh, partnered to finish and, and do a project for, for the BRX mm. as well. I joined uh, the university in 2017 and graduated uh, last, last June. Okay. Um, and I also, w we won the internship in first place. We, we worked very hard on it uh, together mm. to, uh, to finish it, which, which is basically converting the Hunter vehicle to a hybrid one that works on the internal combustion engine alongside regenerative braking, which wow. is an electrical unit. Uh, so I'm, I, I was very excited, to be honest, to finish the internship and also looking forward to other op future opportunities. Can't wait to hear more about the operations in a bit, definitely. Heading to you, Hassan, tell us more about yourself. Yeah, so thank you for having us first. Most um, definitely. My name is Hassan Al-Asfour. I'm currently a mechanical engineering student at the University of Bahrain. Mm. As um, this opportunity, to be honest, um, to be nominated to such great internship um, wow. 
alongside my uh, colleague as well, Mohamed okay. Nader. He couldn't make it. Hmm. So, yeah. But Big shout out to him. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's great to be here. Awesome. And I'm you know, looking forward to hear more about your exciting stories, right? Yeah. Let's sure. hear about that in a bit. Faris. Hi, uh, I'm Faris Nasser al uh, I'm a third year mechanical engineering student at the American University of Bahrain. Mm. Uh, this journey to get this internship was a qu qu quite a lengthy one. Uh, started in a previous semester and then uh, we got uh, provided the, the opportunity by uh, Mumtalakat and uh, our universities and mm. uh, me and my colleague Salman Ahmed who uh, uh, we worked on a project and uh, it was a struggle to fit it in within uh, our other academics. Okay. However, uh, alhamdulillah, we managed to win the competition and we went on this uh, amazing internship. Awesome, awesome. Excited. So much going on here. A lot of stories to be told. So, no to you, Justin. Let's go back. Now, everybody's been talking about the internship. Tell us more mm -hmm. about it. I mean, how did you guys get selected? Did you have to apply? What was the process? How was the internship all together taking place? Yeah, we start. Uh, when we receive uh, an email from our uh, head of uh, engineering school, right. Dr. Christina, that uh, there's an internship uh, for ProDrive to get uh, more uh, information, uh, details, and uh, experience in, uh, uh, in ProDrive. Right. So uh, we get this email and uh, we apply for it, uh, me and uh, my colleague uh, Farida Busagir. Mm. And uh, we start working on it once we receive the data from uh, ProDrive. Right. Because they provide us uh, with a lot of uh, data to work on it. Right. So we can uh, convert the BRX from a regular uh, rally car into a hybrid uh, car. Nice. That's working uh, IC engine plus electric motor, which is uh, supported by regenerative braking. Okay. So once we finish from this uh, study, me and Farid, uh, we present uh, this study for the for the doct uh, different doctors uh, in uh, Bahrain Polytechnic. Mm. Then uh, we get selected uh, between an, uh, different uh, groups of uh, engineering students. So, as we are selected, we went to the internship, uh, which is start on first of July, and we went there for uh, four weeks. Okay. So uh, we divided, uh, we have been uh, divided into three groups mm. and uh, each group work in a different department. Right. And uh, after each week, uh, we were uh, rounded in different departments. Mm. So each group can cover all the different departments. Okay. So uh, for me and Farid, we start in uh, the technician uh, part uh, where we can uh, work on the car itself, mm. which is the hunter car. Uh, where the car they uh, provided from the race, uh, they uh, work on it from the beginning. Okay, oh, wow. Yeah, so uh, the next uh, department was the designing department. Okay. Uh, so where they uh, designed the car itself. Uh, and the third department was uh, <coughs> the engine uh, dyno. All that took place in the internship? Yeah. Wow. Oh man, you've been through a lot. Yeah, it was a uh, quite uh, great experience uh, where we learned a lot in each department. I'm sure you did. Yeah, so uh, these uh, three weeks and the fourth one, uh, we work all together uh, and we met uh, the Aston Martin uh, racing team. And they present for us uh, how they are preparing for the race, uh, how they are working uh, uh, before each race and how they prepare right. for it. Right. And then uh, we met with the BRX team, which they uh, uh, show us how they are working and uh, uh, how they experience uh, their experience in uh, spending two weeks right. uh, for the BRX in the uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Man. So that how they prepare for the race, how they will work, and uh, even how they will sleep at night in the desert. So <laughs> it was a uh, yeah, great experience. So as well as uh, we went to the composite uh, manufacturer there okay. for the company itself okay. and for the painting uh, manufacturer for the carbon fiber. 
Right. So it was an amazing uh, four weeks we uh, spent it there. And sure it was an uh, amazing experience. Sure it was. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm just listening to you. I'm like, this was like one of those Arabian nights. <laughs> it was like but what, with mechanical stuff and cars. <laughs> yeah. This is pretty cool. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Seems like a very, you know, pretty much, again, once in a lifetime kind of opportunity, but it's going to prolong to something even bigger and better. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing the experience. Now, going to you, Farid, you know, with all that he said, but there's a lot of operations taking place with the BRX and all of that. Tell us yes. more about that. Well, basically, to be honest, it was very interesting, to be honest, to know uh, how the oper operations go right. uh, with the car. So the car goes to the, to the race and it gets faced with a lot of obstacles because obviously the Dakar race is um, an off-road race with a lot of hills, a lot of uh, sand, uh, so it gets faced with a lot of challenges and a lot mm. of stresses, especially to the suspension system itself. Mm. So the car comes back from the race and it has to be rebuilt from okay. the scratch. The major parts are removed, they are sent to inspection, wow. and then the inspection wow. team, they make sure that every part is ready for the next stage or for, or, or for the next uh, race, and then they bring it back to the technicians for them to re reassemble the car again. Mm. And we had to experience, we had the honor to experience that there because the first right. week in the, manuf in the manufacturing week, me and Jocelyn uh, had the opportunity to assemble the suspension system uh, with like the upper and the lower wishbone with the shock right. absorbers and everything. So it was really great knowing how it is assembled, how each bolt needs a specific torque to be, to be set oh, at. Wow and how they were really professional with the, with those approaches. Nice. That's uh, when it comes to the manufacturing uh, part. And then right. you have also the designing and the engineering part. Okay. So basically, when, th when the car comes, they, just, they don't just reassemble it, but they also try to keep up with new technologies or come up with new ones. Right. So they see what was done or what went well or, or went wrong in the last uh, race and then they come up with new solutions and new ideas to apply to the car before it goes to the next race. Mm. Basically by designing um, parts in a different way or reducing an efficiency of uh, a particular area and so on. So they do that um, in the engineering department, designing department before mm. sending it to the manufacturing, casting department or uh, whatsoever. So, uh, and also they consider um, that to be in, in, in a full circle. So they work, so they work as a team right. and they communicate really well with, with each other. They should, definitely. Yeah, so it was very interesting for me, to be honest, to experience how the op operations are done and also to get a bit of each department wow. that uh, I want to. Wow. So it, it, it was amazing. Um, well, from the sound of it, you know, even with the communication part, like how they are coming together as one body, yes. and they diagnose the entire thing with the assembly and how we can actually bring new technology. It is so fascinating, you know, exactly. pretty much like how he went there and so the technology behind it. Mm. This is amazing, man. It's amazing. Even it the is. way you've been talking, it's like, you know, you went deep in the technical part, but you were like pretty much shining. <laughs> With energy because I did enjoy it. it, to be honest. It shows, yeah. it really mm -hmm. shows. Well, thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. And now, heading to you, Hassan, with all that been said and everything. Tell us more about the BRX Hunter. You know, it's called the Hunter, right? Yeah, it's the Hunter, yeah. So basically, um, the BRX Hunter, I would say, um, what I, what's amazing about the BRX Hunter, to be more specific, is its unique design, yeah. I would say, um, allowing it to reach a top speed of about 186 miles per hour, which is roughly around um, 300 oh kilometers wow. per hour, oh wow. uh, making it amongst the fastest rally racing cars in the world. That's pretty fast, actually. Yeah, it is indeed. So, yeah, and um, when it comes to the BRX Hunter vehicle, um, it is the perfect candidate, I would say. Like when we go to, pro when we went to the ProDrive headquarters mm. and uh, we got the chance to work and contribute to the design and the manufacturing of the vehicle, uh, I was like very um, sure that. It is the perfect candidate for um, uh, driving, the desert driving, I'd say, desert right. driving. Okay. And yeah, so it's quite expensive. All right, we'll yeah, get to do that later, is, I guess. This is <laughs> definitely worth it. Oh, yeah, well, in I'm terms sure of the of performance and yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Did you ever drive one? Uh, no, unfortunately we, we didn't get the chance to, but yeah. yeah. 
you need, you, I think you need special kind of training for this, right? Because yeah. it's not like a, it's like like a Nissan Sunny. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I love my car and all like of that. It's like, and you're out. <laughs> yeah. You know, you must like be a, a professional bicycle. driver. But this is like, you know, this is like actually you have to take a simulation, I guess, and need to know how it's going on, especially you know, an off-track car. Yes. With all the obstacles, there's a lot that takes place over there. Well, exactly. thank you so much for sharing that. It was thank pretty you. exciting. But us, yes. now the deck cars and all of that, that kind of stuff, and BRX Hunter, but there are different type of cars that yes. takes place. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so ProDrive is expanding, and they're not just a motorsport company. Mm. Uh, they do many different things. Uh, with regards to the types of cars that they have, they have many. For ex As we mentioned, the BRX Hunter that they do have for the Dakar Rally car, right. Rally event. Uh, they also have custom cars, so they made a, a, a custom Subaru P25. Oh, wow. Yeah, we actually got to see one being worked on. Uh, we went to Utah and Millbrooks where they do the car testing, and uh, we got to see one over there, mm. and they're planning to make a limited number of them. That was uh, very cool to see. Cool. Um, they also work with, the, as uh, Justin mentioned, the Aston Martin team uh, for Le Mans. Okay. Yeah, the 24-hour race. Uh, so we got a chance. We, d we got a chance to see uh, different Aston Martins in the workshop, actually in Pro Drive, mm. and uh, as well they work on Lewis Hamilton's uh, uh, extreme uh, uh, wow. team car. They work on the. They work with the X44 team, which wa which is very very interesting to me, especially that I am a Formula One fan. Okay. Um, what makes the BRX Dakar uh, type uh, the BRX car specifically like very impressive is that. The design and the development of the Dakar car is very quick. So I got the chance in my first week where I was in the chassis department. Mm. Uh, I got to speak to the head of chassis. Okay. And they told me that the whole chassis gets de designed in a span of like three months, maybe even less. Wow. Now, just to put that into comparison, an entire F1 car gets, deve gets development for between six to 12 months. So that just gives you an idea of how fast Crazy. the development that they have to keep giving uh, for the Dakar car. It's a very, very specific type of car that needs a, a very fast development because uh, obviously they have a limited amount of time. Right. Uh, also, like in my, uh, in my fourth week, uh, I was in the manufacturing department and I also, I got to work a little bit on the BRX car. Okay. And uh, what was interesting to me is how much attention to detail they put. So they even like look at how much, uh, how tight a bolt uh, needs to be Different, the different oh, uh, foams uh, they need uh, to put, the <laughs> insulation on a radiator. There are many different components to the BRX Dakar car, which was just fascinating to see. It's the engineering of it is just phenomenal. I mean, that's a course on its own. You can actually get a degree just learning what a Dakar car is and yeah. all of that. And it seems like Dakar and racing all together is just getting more popularity than before, right? You know, it's keeping mm. up with the big races and all that kind of stuff. So it seems like, you know, we're jumping in at the right time. Yes. You know, yeah, and, and exactly. just making history right now. You guys made history, actually. You know, proud to have this interview. You know, pretty much in the future, when everybody right now, you'll be a manager. You're gonna own your own BRX company, maybe a branch. You're gonna have your own thing going on. Just remember this interview. I huh? just let you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, back to you, Jossam. Now, mm. tell us about the more of the collaboration between the BRX and Pro Drive. I mean, it's apparently a lot been going on. You know, and the collaboration is yeah. pretty tight. Tell us more about that. Yeah. Uh, it's between uh, Broadrive and uh, actually uh, with the Umtelecart where they have uh, one project which is the PRX. Mm. So this uh, uh, project uh, which is the PRX, it's present uh, Kingdom of Bahrain in uh, one of the most extreme uh, rally race in the world, right. which is the uh, Dakar, uh, Dakar event. Right. So actually uh, this is present uh, Bahrain, the name of Kingdom of Bahrain. And uh, actually, it's, uh, <coughs> in the last uh, race in the Dakar event, they got the second place, which is a uh, uh, very huge step uh, that they get it. Mm. So in two years, they uh, start from uh, the be uh, from behind and they get uh, to the second place in right. two years, which is it, sh it shows that uh, a very high technology is implemented in this car. So this internship, uh, actually, it's. Uh, give us uh, this uh, amazing uh, chance mm. to uh, get this experience with uh, one of the uh, great uh, uh, companies in right. the United Kingdom. So we get the chance to get more experience about the mm. automotive uh, cars and uh, the rally car itself. Wow. So it was an uh, amazing experience and uh, 
this chance to, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, let's say, it's uh, very important uh, for us and uh, for our future. I'm sure, I'm sure it is. And I'm sure it was an amazing experience, as you said yourself right now. Wow, I mean, it seems we're gonna go, we're heading to a very exciting times here, aren't we? You know, yeah. the BRX and stuff like that. It's like, people need to know, it's like, this is actually happening. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yes, there's a lot of great things taking place, but you guys are pretty much bringing an exciting story right here. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been told that you actually designed a handbrake, you know? And it's yes. not like the one I have on my Nissan Sun. It's, just, it's just a different <laughs> one, right? Yes, so to be honest, I. Uh, the Hunter, there are, there are two different types. There is okay. the one that participates in the race, which is right. called the Hunter T1 Plus. Right. And then there's the Hunter Hypercar, which is basically the Hunter, but with more performance. Uh, to, to, uh, to make it more clear, the, the, the normal racing car mm -hmm. has produces 400 horsepower, but the Hypercar, which is the one sold as a commercial car, uh, produces around 600 horsepower. Okay. Because of uh, the regulations, the, uh, the the racing one produces uh, produces less. Okay. So they had. Um, uh, if you if you're gonna race, you'll not really care about how the interior looks, right? So, but if you're gonna sell the car, you would consider that. Right. Right. Exactly. So, they had a task to change the design of the handbrake lever. Okay. Uh, of of the normal hunter for the hyper one, they need they need one which would look let's say more aggressive to look nicer in a way mm. uh, for the hypercar that's, go that's going to be more sold aggressive uh, okay it's interesting yes for because it is uh, it is a racing car but they need, they need to uh, for it to, to look nice but at the same time not really like fancy it, it is a racing car right so basically i had this task to redesign uh, the existing uh, handbrake lever mm. and what i did is uh, decide on whatever design I, wa I wanted to look like, but also consider the engineering aspect of it. Mm. So a normal uh, hand handbrake in a normal car, you would not pull it as strong as you would in a racing car. Right. Because you would use it in, in a, during the race or during performance, mainly for drifting. So you'd pull it as hard as you, uh, as you can continuously throughout the time you're driving the vehicle. Wow. So you'd need to consider or make sure that this lever actually withstands that pulling force. Okay. For that, uh, what I basically did, I designed it in a CAD software, basically, and mm. then also considered how the design looks and made sure that it can withstand that, that pulling force. Okay. Uh, the cross-section of the, of the handbrake lever itself makes a difference. Like if it was cylindrical, or it was uh, circular, it makes okay. a difference. The one, the one I, I, I went with is in an eye shape. And if, it is, if the cross section is an eye shape, it can actually reduce the stress applied to it, which, which can basically uh, be an advantage. So I did that and made it look uh, more nice, uh, nicer than the existing one. Okay. And how I calculated the, the stresses on it and made sure that it is safe by doing it through hand calculations. They can do it through a software called FAA, which is Finite Element Analysis. Okay. They don't need hand calculations, but the chief engineer there wanted me to do the hand calculations for me, just to, uh, or for a way for him to test me okay. and see what I, can, what, I, what I can do and if I understand the basic engineering knowledge that I did study back in university. Okay. So I, I did that, I applied the hand calculations for that and made sure that it can withstand the pulling force. And what I did after researching online of stand, what is the maximum force that a young male can pull okay. the handbrake lever. Right. And then from that, I multiplied that by two, which is a factor of safety that right. you need to include right. in designing anything. Smart. From that, uh, using I co uh, I found the final stresses that are can be ap applied to to such a handbrake lever and compared it with the one the material used in in that lever can withstand. Uh, after finalizing and showing the chief engineer that it can actually withstand that uh, pulling force, right. we took a cross section of the uh, the grip and three right. D printed it as a prototype to check the ergonomics of it. Crazy. If it, if it feels if it feels great and if it fits properly. And we had, we had first, w when we 3D printed the first one, it wasn't 
properly aligned with your fingers so i had to then increase the spaces and redesign okay. it and 3d print it again until they wow. told me that it is it is proper that is crazy that is the amount of research you had mm. to do just to make that happen and you i'm sure you enjoyed every moment of it yes. pretty much understanding the force of a male between that age to that age and you multiply by two for safety reasons yes. and pretty much whether it's cylindrical or you want to take different shapes just to understand the physics behind it and the pulling force that is unbelievable all that in one month well, guys for real yeah, and i didn't even hear it i didn't even hear it like you know mm. I, I think it's just the tip of the iceberg at this point it's like wow that was crazy. Thank you so much for sharing. I mean, on, in a few minutes, you gave me a month of experience or maybe even less, but I can't even imagine what the future will be like pretty much. What are you going to design the future, you know, like from a handbrake to something else? Well, we'll talk about that later, I guess. Now, heading to you, Hassan. Now, what seems to be like pretty much with the Dakar cars and the BRX and all of that, it's always been like something for racing. But now, from what we understand, you know, and going online and seeing what's happening, individuals can buy it now. Tell us more about that. Exactly, yeah. So basically, um, when it comes to uh, why would like someone buy the BRX Hunter? Because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is indeed, yeah. But in terms of the performance itself, so yeah. if we can discuss more the specifications right. of the uh, Hunter itself. Sure. So uh, the FIA, which is um, the abbreviation for a French term, Mm. Fédération Internationale de l'Automobile. Sounds beautiful. International <laughs> Federation of Automobiles. All right. Yeah. Um, they have some specific regulations. So basically, uh, the BRX team had to do some modifications, like uh, larger tires, um, uh, larger uh, suspension travel, an increase in the vehicle's um, body width, mm. I would say. Yeah, so there are some modifications to be done. And then now we can discuss the specifications more. Right. Like starting with the engine, what kind of engine they use. Um, it is the 3.5 liters V6 twin turbo engine, okay. which is basically provided by Ford. All right. Okay. Um, the chassis itself, it is made of a combination of uh, high, uh, high uh, l uh, structural steel. Okay. Uh, also, like including the carbon fiber for the uh, vehicle body. All right. Okay. And also, um, the shape of the vehicle, how like it would go uh, on the off-road yeah. The vehicle itself. Yeah. So yeah, um, the specifications themselves, like after discussing the engine, right. let's talk about the power itself. Let's go with the power. Yeah. What's so the power on it that provides thing? like uh, around 600 horsepower. That's a beast. Yeah, it is indeed. Yeah. And around 700 Newton meters torque, wow. which makes it like, it is a beast, as you, <laughs> you, as you mentioned. You yeah, have it is that on track, and like off track, it's pretty much gonna go through mountains. Yeah. But off track, I'm like, oh wow. So yeah, basically, they allow buyers to um, go even on Dakar, but there are some conditions, I would say, like not any amateur buyer, you know? He, he must be, he, he must like have some skills to some extent, I would say. Yeah to be like allowed to buy such car, such vehicle. I mean, if it's if the handbrake has been designed by Farid <laughs> with yeah. that force, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's like this guy has to have, to have like six packs and two biceps <laughs> 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 to make that just one gesture yeah. of a handbrake movement. But tell us more about the car. You, you really got my attention right here. I'm sure everybody's listening to this like, whoa, we want one of those. Yeah. Even Batman, he's like gonna chase his Batmobile to this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, basically, um, uh, we, by, the, by the way, when I mentioned uh, that they use the carbon fiber for the body, the vehicle, yeah. um, we got the chance to see their facility where they manufacture and they heat treat the carbon to fit and to meet the design requirements for the vehicle. Okay. So yeah, uh, pretty much it's, uh, there's no like um, disadvantages of using such vehicle on such um, competition. Yeah, I I'm sure. So. Look, you got my attention here, right? Yeah. Now I'm thinking like, okay, I want this car. Now the second question is that, how much will it cost me to get one of these cars? So, so like a uh, few thousands, I don't know. A few thousands? <laughs> but, oh wow, that smile, uh -huh. that smile is telling me more than that. Well, how much will it cost to get myself a BRX Roughly, Hunter? Roughly, so. I would say about 1.25 million pounds, excluding the taxes. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us here today on Behind Us. We're gonna make you wait. <laughs> 1.2? But let me like behind any dinars, million uh, pounds, pounds. pounds. one point two five million pounds. Oh wow! Yeah, still a lot. but to be honest, in terms of the performance, it is definitely worth it. Six hundred, man, it's, yeah. that's a beast.
It is. Like, would you drive this on a, on a normal road? Like, if you're gonna take it from Bahrain TV all the way to Seif Mall, <laughs> would you do that? The well, mm -hmm. I would say like um, the off-road version, yeah. like it's, um, it's a bit different. Right. Like um, the one is more comfy. Like you need to consider many other factors. Okay. Like if it is the off-road version or the normal version. Right. So yeah, but it is, I would say, yeah, very powerful. Two seaters? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's only one seater? No, 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 no two, two seaters. seaters. Just, yeah. you know, I just want to have my kids. Yeah, you know, for sure, yeah. You know, my partner is like, I, I, I want to drive this all the way to Saudi. <laughs> it's going to be lots of fun. It is, yeah. Wow, 1.25 pounds. I mean, it's yeah. worth it. I mean, pretty much the car with all of everything you said. And, it, and hey, a signature design by Farid himself with the handbrake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where the price went up. Maybe it was like 10,000, then the handbrake was like a million. Yeah, <laughs> thanks to Farid. <laughs> thanks to you, Farid. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much thank for you. that. Now, going to you, Faris. Yes. Now, he designed the handbrakes, but you designed the cover of an engine. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so basically in my third week in the internship, I got to spend time in the powertrains department, which, it, which basically includes working on the engine, um, and both in the dyno engine and uh, the actual designing uh, aspect of it. Okay. So basically, uh, on one of the days, I was tasked to design a cover for a scav pump inlet, and um, uh, at the beginning, you know, it, it might seem daunting to yeah. do such a thing because especially this is work that they will actually take in, it's official work. Mm. So I started off by looking at the actual uh, scaf pump inlet and uh, they gave me the 3D uh, CAD of it. Uh, it's actually, use, they use a, soft, a CAD software called NX, which is a higher version of uh, other programs such as SOLIDWORKS. And um, basically I started off with the basics. Okay. I, t I started with making a sketch by taking measurements of the actual uh, gap that I need to cover, basically. Okay. And uh, I, took the, I took the measurements to start with, and then after that, I started the sketch on the program. Hmm. At the beginning, uh, after I finished the sketch and I made a 3D model, I realized I made a few errors. Okay. Yeah, so basically I had issues with the constraints, uh, the shape wasn't exactly right, and uh, however, after a bit of help and after uh, fixing it and after a bit of work on the program, uh, I, f I managed to fix it. The nice thing about uh, when I worked on the cover is that they gave me the free choice of designing it uh, however, uh, however I want, as long as it fits the criteria that they need, which is basically being able to cover the, uh, the inlet okay. and as well making sure that there are holes uh, for it to be adjusted. Awesome. Um, but however, I didn't want to just have a regular cube to cover it. I wanted it to perfectly fit the shape of the inlet. That's why it took me time to figure it out. That's why I needed to fix the, that's why I, need, I needed to have uh, the uh, constraints on the measurements and everything so that it fits perfectly. And uh, after a bit of work, uh, I'm very happy with the final design because it perfectly matched the inlet hole so that uh, it looks seamless basically. Amazing. Which was amazing. And after I finished that, I actually got the chance to make a technical drawing on the same program, right. uh, also known as a drafting, uh, which basically shows the dimensions, uh, the, a 2D picture of the, of, the, of the actual design from different angles. And uh, on that day was actually the first day that I managed, uh, I made a f official schematic okay. drawing uh, of a 3D model, which I'm very proud of. Amazing, amazing. So 1.25 pounds. So we're talking half a million goes to the design of the handbrake and the half a million goes to the design of the cover. Now I understand why it's costing more than a million. Well, gentlemen, this has been a very exciting talk. Thank you so much for joining us. I can tell before even entering the internship, you were like thinking of something and now after that, I'm sure you had opportunities opened up after this. You have a different perspective and a lot of things are taking place. So I just want to say thank you so much. We're proud of you for what you've been doing mm -hmm. and we can't wait to hear more stories in the future. So again, thank you so much for joining us right here on Bahrain now. Much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, really. you very much. Oh, most definitely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was a very exciting talk, pretty much talking about the BRX Hunter and their collaboration with ProDrive. I can only imagine the future of the Dakar industry right here in Bahrain. All that took place in an interview right here on Bahrain Now.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to the finish line. A huge thank you to all of our guests for joining us tonight. Another huge thank you to all of you watching us at home. As always, be sure to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below. We love hearing from you. I'm Bara Abdullah. Till next time, Bahrain. Good night and God bless.